104.5, the team, you're home for New York sports. We're joined on the phone by Jordan Ronan. Of course, uh, he's our guy at ESPN who does everything. He covers all the Giants noise. So let's talk about the most noise that's been going on. What's the latest on Odell Beckham Jr.? It was that mini camp, right? He showed up. That's really what it matters here. He's, uh, with the Giants, there's no holdout because he never held out in the first place. He just didn't come to voluntary mini camp. I mean, uh, OTA. Now his mini camp was mandatory. He's there. Now, you know, the, the reality of this would like the Giants to start talking to him about a new deal. And, you know, if you listened yesterday and you heard him talk, I think it was the second or, or third question. It was like, uh, did your contract have anything to do with you not being at OTAs? And he was, uh, he said, you know, you got to ask the, the people who handle the contract. I don't know. Okay, he doesn't know. Oh, no, but he's a smart guy. He knows. So there was a lot of bobbing and weaving going on there. And uh, at the end, he kind of said, oh, no, I don't believe in holdouts. But that was on his third try on the same question. So, you know, if he wasn't willing to say no, look, if he doesn't, if it, if, if it had nothing to do with wanting a new contract, he would have just said no right away. Be easy, easy. Just say no. It's nothing to do with that. I just wanted, I just wanted to. Spent time on my own. It was voluntary. You know what? He spoke the whole time, 11 and a half minutes, and he never once used the word voluntary when talking about OTA. Not once. Going going forward now with Odell Beckham Jr., is there a possibility, whether it be now this mini camp or training camp, that he misses or is not there at the other point? No, I don't think so. I think he made his point. He still looks. Here's the deal with the situation. He wants them to start talking to him, right? He wants to start hearing and at least moving towards getting a new deal. He wants to know that they're committed to him long term. I know John Mara came out and said it, but there's one thing between saying something, Odell Beckham says he's grown up now a hundred times, there's another thing between doing it. We haven't seen it so far. I mean, he said it again yesterday, and he goes out and wears cleats that tells everyone to basically to shut up. And... Uh, <laughs> Jordan Rod on with us right now. He covers the, the Giants for ESPN.com and, and the mothership as a whole. Jordan, I, I one thing I was very curious about. Everyone is sitting here and they're killing Odell Beckham Jr. for not being at voluntary stuff. Olivier Vernon wasn't there either, and nobody brings him up at all. Is, is there any is there any backlash for him in all of this? No, you mean look, Odell's a star. Olivier Vernon is not a star. Let's be honest. And Odell kind of brought this on himself a little bit. I mean, some of it obviously is overboard. But Olivier Vernon stays under the radar. He's low-key. Odell is not low-key. Uh, he doesn't stay under the radar. He has some past, so, you know, incidents and all these things. And, you, and the way the last season ended also, I think, contributed greatly to the fact that he that all this wrath was brought upon on him. Look, I'm a big believer that OTA is or pretty much pointless. I mean, when guys when guys are injured, and I talk to them, I'm always like, yo, don't let them rush you back for the spring. It means nothing. So it really doesn't, it's not going to affect how Odell Beckham plays. You'd like to see him be there, sure. He's a leader. He's one of the leaders on the team. You would hope he would be one of the leaders on the team. This isn't exactly what you want, but all these other things that come around him, you know, when he's taking pictures with Johnny Manziel, when he's in uh, going to the Final Four and Sitting, he's sitting on the bench. Did you see where he was sitting for the Warriors game? Yes. He could have tripped Steve Kerr. He could have passed in the middle of the game. I think they had him in the game, didn't they? I, he almost got put in. That's, how, that's where he was. He was sitting on the bench in Cleveland.
Cleveland, but it was on the Golden State bench. So all these things put together. Odell Beckham is a lightning rod. That's why he attracts us attention. And some of it is brought upon himself, and some of it is just uh, the circumstances that he's in. You know, he's become a huge star, the whole cat thing, uh, the, the, the flair that he has, the hair, the look. People, people just are attracted to this guy. So, uh, you know, that's why Odell Beckham is a big deal, and Olivier Vernon has been able to kind of fly under the radar. You don't believe OTAs is a big deal, but how about his teammates? Are any teammates being rubbed the wrong way that he and Olivia Vernon were not at these workouts? Nah, they don't care about that. These, look, the quarterbacks have to be there because they're quarterbacks. They're like almost like a, they, they sign on and you're like a different position, right? So that's part of Eli Manning's gig. He has to come to these things. And that's part of the leadership of being a quarterback. He's got to be there to work with these young guys. You know, whether Odell Beckham works with Evan Ingram or not, is not important in June or May. But it is important for Eli Manning because he's the quarterback. So it's different. But, you know, I I was on an interview and I was uh, Willie Cohn was on the other side and he was talking. And he was telling us stories about how Troy Palomaro never saw him. He came when he had to come. He was off in Hawaii doing his thing and everybody knew it and everyone just accepted it. And that's kind of the deal with with guys like Odell Beckham and Olivier Vernon. They're the kind of guys where you where you realize this is who they are. This is who they're going to be. You're going to see them when it's mandatory. They're stars. Guys know there's different levels of treatment. When their level of production starts to fall off, then maybe it becomes a problem. But right now, everyone knows Odell Beckham's the best player on this team, and then he can do whatever he wants as long as he comes out there and performs on Sunday. Jordan Rod on with us uh, from ESPN.com. It's it's still good to say that. I love I love that you're with us now, man. Part of the family, the four letter network. Uh, what's uh, what's the story with Brandon Marshall? How he, how is he looking so far in, in blue? Yeah, Brandon Marshall. First of all, I mean this guy's a beast. I know you hear about how he's big, but you don't really realize it until you're looking at him on the field or standing next to this guy. I mean, he is a monster. He looks, he, he looks like a tight end. He's huge. And then I, I, there was one play during uh, OTAs that really stood out to me. Is You know, he was matched up against Janoris Jenkins, Pro Bowl cornerback, really good player, right? And he beat him down to the left sideline for a deep pass that would have went for a touchdown. And you're like, yeah, this guy's 33. I was wondering if maybe he lost a step because last year was such a disaster for him. But it was also disaster for the Jets and their quarterback play. He was injured, so it was really hard to sort of ha- come up with a valuation of him. But when I see him do that, be able to get downfield against a player like Janoris Jenkins, I'm like, well, this guy definitely has something left, and I expect him to be a big contributor in the red zone too. Obviously, when he has that kind of size, that kind of body control, that kind of ability, that is just a major asset for this team, which was really missing that. Jordan Rod on. So Jordan, when we uh, when we make our way out to camp, Gaz has already said he's going to buy you dinner. So I didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't worry. We're all part of the same family now. Somebody's buying it. It ain't me. <laughs> Jordan, uh, man, we appreciate you, and we're just going to keep hitting you up during uh, during OTAs and every well now that now actual camp mandatory camp. Yeah, we'll be here for a couple days, then it's a uh, break time. Six weeks summer break. It's like. The last day of minicamp is kind of like the last day of school for kids. <laughs> you know, like, seriously, the, the locker room clears out so quickly. They're all on flight. Everybody's out of here. But let me tell you something else. It's not that far off from the media. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Summer break is coming up very soon. Jordan, man, thanks so much for making time as always, brother. We appreciate you. I'll be sipping the mimosas starting on Friday morning, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to have one just in honor of you. At that, I'm all, that I'm all Friday, man. I might start early. <laughs> there you go. Thursday night. <laughs> all right, guys.